I just finished one of the strangest books that I've ever read. Certainly one of the weirdest sci-fi books, which is saying a lot. It is Cthon by Piers Anthony, which is his first published novel. Piers Anthony is portrayed to me in what little media I see that regards him either as someone who is politically uh, déclassé and or a bad writer. And I can see from reading this why those two things are opinions that circulate about him, but I don't necessarily think that it's deserved having just read this one book from him. And I can't say that it's a good book, but it's certainly not a bad book. It's an enigmatic book that I would be hard pressed to actually recommend to anybody that I knew personally to read. It's one of those books that you can't just hand to a friend and say, here, read this, you'll enjoy it, and have them look at you exactly the same way afterwards, or be grateful that you made the recommendation. But I do recommend you, stranger on the internet, read this book. I would give it definitely a seven out of 10. It's a, a chaotic, convoluted novel. There are way too many ideas packed into it. It's an erratic, storyline there are at core really two plots there's an a plot and a b plot but there are all of these interweaving tendrils of subplots that make for a really confusing at times reading experience it's overwrought prose in places it's very confusing a lot of the times you just don't know what the shit is going on when you're reading but the overall effect is is really uh, powerful, I would say. It's, uh, it's an extreme book. This is a book that I don't think could be published today. It was written in 1967. It is sexually extreme. It is brutally violent. And the protagonist is a... a fairly profoundly unlikable character who uh, commits multiple crimes throughout the book. Don't read anything about this book. If you're not familiar with it, if you haven't heard of this book, and if you haven't read it, do not read anything on the internet about it because every single fucking thing that is written about this book spoils the major plot twist in the book. And it doesn't come until the last, I don't know, quarter of the book and everybody just leaps over themselves to tell you exactly what happens because it's so outrageous and outlandish, which it is, but it would pack a, a way bigger punch reading the book if you didn't see it coming. Although there was some pretty heavy-handed foreshadowing. And unfortunately, I knew the plot twist going into it, so it, that definitely took something away from it, I think. But the basic story, without any spoilers, the basic story is there's a young boy born on a planet called Havi, H-V-E-E, -E, where the main crop, the main industry is cultivating this plant. It's a sentient plant or semi-sentient plant that is bonded to a single owner as a, jet, a token of love from a marriage partner. And the plant can only live as long as the love remains true and it dies when love dies. And this boy encounters a mysterious woman in the woods playing a song on a mysterious instrument with red hair who uh, he falls in love with. And the, the book is that plot line, him attempting to solve the mystery of who this woman is and pursuing her well into adulthood. And a, a B plot of being a prisoner in this massive underground cavern prison called Cthon, where he cohabitates with other you know, hundreds of other prisoners mining gemstones. And those two plot lines run parallel to each other and eventually intersect, as you could have guessed. And it's just a big, wonderful, horrifying mess. I mean, it's really quite a disturbing book. The violence, is, the there, there are horror elements that I wasn't expecting that come towards the latter part of the book. Really pretty extreme horror, sci-fi horror, which is a rare flavor and one that I actually consciously seek out. I really like sci-fi horror and there's not a whole lot of it in the world that is done well. And this is, go figure, an example of it, which I didn't uh, think was the case going into it. 
the prison story works on its own momentum. It is really gripping, genuinely gripping. It's a really well-told sci-fi story. Uh, and the A plot of him pursuing the love interest just goes to places that are are just so bizarre. Not even like the big plot twist, which which is famous. It it just it takes you through these plot cycles that are just bizarre, almost indescribably bizarre. And it's it the universe constructed in this book has like 35 moving parts and most of it is not really satisfactorily resolved. So it's like uh it's it's like those jars full of mismatched jewelry that you see at Goodwills from time to time. And there's a lot in there that is glittering and appealing, but there is just a lot of bullshit as well that should have been thrown away. But it's still, it's worth buying. If you have a strong stomach, if you uh, can wade into the the murky past of the late 60s and cope with a level of, I would say, unapologetic horniness on Anthony's part that is pretty alien to today's sci-fi writing, writing in general. If you, can, if you can deal with that, if you can deal with sexual violence, if you can deal with extreme sexual themes, and if you can deal with extreme violence violence and, and horror, and you just you you're curious to read a book that is not always actually enjoyable to read and leaves you scratching your head then i i wholeheartedly endorse this book it is a very mixed bag and again i did not necessarily enjoy reading it but i really like the book which i can't say of that many other books but it was just uh an article of fascination of continued fascination i finished it in two days because it was just so weird. It's just such a weird book, and it's such a period book, and it makes me actually want to read more of Piers Anthony, even though he is lambasted as a, a bad writer, which he occasionally is, but occasionally isn't. There is some good prose in this. There's some terrible prose, and it's just this big, uh, big absolute clusterfuck of a book, and I kind of recommend it.